What's up, everyone? If you're watching the countdown, please skip this countdown. If you're watching the replay, I mean, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and skip this countdown. Ethan from Tampa, what's up? Matthew, I see you're calling in, but I don't see your image. Or your camera. I see you, Matthew. What's up, my man? Can you hear me? I heard you a little bit. I can hear some sound. Matthew, you there? Hey, Paul, can you hear me? I can hear you, but I cannot see you. Yeah, just give me one minute, Paul. Okay. Our mics are hot right now, too. Just so I know. Dialed in config. What's up, my man? Hey, Paul. Hey, what's up, Matthew? Thank you. I can, can hear you. Can you see me now? You look good. Everything looks good. Awesome, man. Awesome. All right, so I will... Hey, you're looking good yourself. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and introduce you like maybe 10 minutes in. I'm not sure if you've seen any of the previous episodes, but I go through over the news a little bit in the beginning, and then I'll, I'll intro you in. So you can go ahead and like react, um, talk to people in the chat if you want, or you can just like just listen in. But our mics, awesome, our mics, man. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in all the news you're going to share, so I'll be taking notes here. All right, all right. Let's see. Hobby from Poland. What's up, my man? I see a bunch of you out there. Don't, don't be shy. Say hi. And where you're from? We got three minutes. About three minutes to go. What's up, my man? Yeah, yeah. Hey, time to get a 
started, no delay, let's work. Wanna see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre Devera, steady dropping knowledge. Over 15 years in the game, so he knows all about it. Master the art of SEO, you will be amazed. Time to get your brand off page to on page. Dropping knowledge, legendary for sure. Whether you're just getting started or self-employed entrepreneur. Yeah, let's go. Subscribe to the SEO video show. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Welcome to another episode of the SEO video show where SEO is alive and fun. My name is Paul Andre Devera, a.k.a. Dre, and I curate SEO videos released in the past week into about one-minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get to introduce my guest, and my guest this week is the founder of Alphamedic, Matthew Kapala. Before we get started, I want to say hi to everyone in chat. I see. Hold on here. Who do I see here? All right, all right. I see Hobby, Beverly, Andrew, Eleanor, Glenn, Ethan. What's up? What's up, Tim, Ray? Dialed in from config. What's up, everyone? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And now let's get, let's pick this week's winners. We, every week I choose three winners. This week I will be giving away three copies of my guest book. So be sure to take a, um, put I Love SEO in the chat or in the description or in the comments below to be selected. And let's pick three winners for this week. All right, let's see there. Sheila, email me your address and I will send you the book when it goes out. <laughs> Victor, send me your address and I will send you a book. And last winner. Lucy, Lucy, send me your address and I will send you a book. All right, all right, all right. Now let's go ahead and start the show. This is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> what kind of fruit do SEOs like best? Low hanging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first with some Google news, Danielle product manager at Google gives us five tips on to get our videos to show up on Google. Let's take a listen. First, make sure your videos are available publicly on the web. If your videos are part of an app, make sure each video also has a corresponding web page with a URL that Google can access. Second, to help Google find your videos and understand what they're about, you can provide structured data using schema.org video object markup. This markup can include information like the video title, description, and duration, thumbnail and video content file URLs. Third, make sure you provide a high quality thumbnail at a URL that Google can access. For example, if the thumbnail URL is blocked with robots.txt, Google won't be able to access that thumbnail. Fourth, Video sitemaps are another way to help Google find videos associated with pages on your site. And finally, fifth, to further optimize your videos, make sure that Google can fetch your video content files. Google said it's going 100% into mobile first indexing in March uh, from September 2020 to March 2021. So are we in mobile first indexing now? Let's find out. We essentially had it set for March. I think there's still some technical details with uh, the last sites that we're working out so that we can switch them over in an optimal way. Uh, but at some point, it'll just be switched over. Uh, if that's like still in March, or maybe in April, or maybe even ends up in May, I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, we're, we're going to be switching over all of these sites. And if your site is ready, then that will just happen then. Uh, we're, we're currently in a state where, where we're not automatically moving sites over anymore, uh, but rather kind of like saving all of these up for, for that last moment and then switching a lot of those over at once. Uh, so if you've improved your site so that it is usable for mobile-first indexing, then that'll just happen. 
All right, all right. So it's gonna looks like it's gonna be pushed down to possibly May. So just go ahead and make sure your site's mobile friendly and mobile index because mobile indexing will be fully rolled out by May. Okay. How do you build local content silos? A past gag, uh, guest, Greg Gifford, shows us how. For think of it like a Venn diagram, but with lots of circles that don't really overlap. Each silo needs to include pretty much everything you do as part of your standard SEO strategy. Your main area of the site should be optimized for the city you're in, but each silo should be optimized around the target city. You'll need to create content specifically for the silo. And yes, that means you'll have additional pages about the products or services that you offer. And I've got psychic powers that work through the internet. And I can tell you're already thinking that it'll be duplicate content, except it won't be duplicate because you'll write unique content for each page and each silo will be optimized for a different city. And the content won't stop with a few product or service pages. You'll also need to crank out some localized blog posts for each silo as well. On a technical level, you'll need to organize internal links in a bit more complex pattern. Instead of linking blog posts and contextual links in the main silo pages back to pages on the main section of the site, you need to interlink among content within each silo. All right, all right. Hopefully you got that. If not, watch the replay and rewatch that. Okay, the tweet of the week. <laughs> is by Bill Slowski. He actually writes uh, uh, what is semantic SEO on, on the GoFish digital blog. It's a great it's a great piece of content and it's a nice resource. On the topic of semantic SEO and entities, Steve Toth shows us how Google Do a Google Docs hack to get SEO entities. Let's check it out. What the strategy boils down to is um, grabbing descriptions from Amazon sites. So why do we do that? Because Amazon sites, um, in this case, copy uh, pages have limited description windows, right? So people have to really pack a lot of information into a small amount of space. And they end up talking about all the really important things with, with regards to coffee makers in these tight spaces. So once you've gone ahead and opened up, you know, three or four, however many, uh, in this case, coffee makers you want to open up, um, copy all those descriptions and drop them into uh, Google Docs. So once you're in Google Docs, um, sorry about that. Once you're in Google Docs, go to the Explore section on the bottom right hand corner. This is only available for Gmail Google Docs as far as I know. And you'll notice here it starts to give you topics that are contained within your content. So now click more and you're going to get all these topics slash entities that are mentioned, right? So this is great. Like I, I had, you know, no idea prior to this that borosilicate glass was something that, you know, people so were, were looking for or was sought after with a coffee maker. Interesting Google hack there. I mean, be sure to sign up for Steve's email list. He goes through a lot of hacks like this and a lot of great SEO tips there. All right, how to improve SEO rankings with blockchain. Sebastian, founder of WordProof, tells us an interesting concept of how building trust through timestamps with blockchain technology. Let's listen in. For search engines, the benefits of a timestamp are that they can verify if people have uh, altered the date, for example. In publishing, it really matters who publishes something first. Through timestamps, it's an open source way to prove that you are the first one. And especially small content makers, they often have the problem that search engines visit bigger, larger websites more often. So as a small content maker, it's harder to get lots of traffic uh, via, via SEO, via search engines. Through timestamps, you can prove that you were first, which uh, is very beneficial as in that way, there's finally an open way to, uh, yeah, to make your point, to show that you are the one breaking the news. And together with, yeah, or sorry, and together with the people at Yoast, we make sure that timestamps are part of the language that search engines uh, and social media platforms understand. And what we will soon announce, that's a first for you, is that uh, a first small search engine will label timestamped results in their uh, search engine result page. Interesting, right? This timestamps as using blockchain technology for timestamps. 
Interesting stuff there. Our last video clip is by Will Reynolds. He gives us how to use big data to scale SEO on the InLinks channel. Let's listen in. Google Search Console. When I was talking about using data for where it has such a unique piece of data that you can't get anywhere else, mm -hmm. that click-through rate for Amazon, um, we're starting to look at like when Amazon shows up in what position, do we see that your click-through rate is way different when Amazon's above you, sitting right around you, right? So then all of a sudden you might say to a client, hey, if Amazon's in the two positions above you, in almost every product category, it's not worth it because your click-through rate gets crushed. So instead, let's look where Amazon's not in the top, in the top. Let's look at the click-through rate as a cluster for that group and say, wow, look, your click-through rate actually is 3x higher when Amazon doesn't show up. And then when you're running your monthly rank checkers, if Amazon comes in, you're like, let's go hands off for a little while. And if Amazon drops out, you might say, hey, let's go in and try to win for a little while. So that's an example of how, um, how, how we're hypothesizing right now on how to use Search Console data to help us to make better decisions. So the minute we say, oh, Amazon's ranking, what does that do to our click-through rate? But then it's like, well, now we have to go scrape Amazon to see whether or not it's our page that's showing up. Are we listed? Because then the money's still going into the same bank. So then the client's not really as concerned. So, you know, like it just becomes this Pandora's box, but that's the fucking fun of it. SEO is like, where can you find that little thing that if you do it, gives you a wedge that's broken between you and your competition because everybody's gonna have SEMrush, everybody's gonna have HREFs, everybody's gonna have these tools. And the thing is, is like, how can I use their data joined to other people's data or even their data in a different way that tells a better story or a different story? And that's where I think most SEOs are gonna create value these days. I highly recommend watching the whole video. It has a lot of nuggets. The link is in the description below. This brings me to my favorite part of the show. Let's ask our special guest today how we can you know, build credibility. And let's see, well, let's please be sure to um, ask questions and during our conversation because this is how we can learn socially. All right, let's go ahead and get the setup here. Let me see here. Matthew is a seasoned SEO strategist, speaker, author, and digital market executive. He has spent over the last 15 years delivering results for some of the most iconic brands in the world, including L'Oreal, Novartis, Moval, Shopkeep, and Mohegan Sun. He is one, he's an SEO trainer and a workshop facilitator at Search Decoder. He's worked with, he's been featured at Forbes, Inc., MSN Money, Chicago Tribune, eMarketer, Huffington Post, Mashable, Entrepreneur, and the Next Web. He speaks regularly at marketing conferences such as the Internet Summit, Marketing Profits, and Digital Summit. He is the author of SEO Like I'm Five, the Keywords Research Like a Pro, and the new the psychology, the psychology of a Website. Please welcome Matthew Coppola. What's up, Matthew? How are you doing today? Hey, what's up, Paul? I'm doing great. How about you? Can you hear me well? I can hear you just fine, my man. All right, all right. You know, when I was putting these video clips together, you have some epic videos out there that you have when you're like just walking, got the slow-mo going on, some cool stuff there. Hey, Paul, you did an amazing job. I was watching it and I was blown away. Uh, thank you for having me on your show. You're doing a great job for the community. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, man, and I'm just glad to be here on your show. Love it, love it. I remember reaching out to you some time ago. I mean, if, I felt like it was it was months ago, and and we're finally here. You told me you're about to release a book, and it's coming out, and I'm, we'll talk about it later. But you know what? Let's rewind. Let's learn a little bit about Matthew's early years of how did you know how did you get into SEO? You know, it's been. Quite a, quite a journey for me personally. Um, I am a Polish immigrant. I started out on the scaffolds of Manhattan, you know, I work in construction and it was pretty warm in the summer, pretty cold in the winter time. And I was really wanted to break in into, you know, inside from the outside the office. I would watch these, you know, beautiful offices with air conditioner and all of that. And I was like, how am I going to get inside that office? And I grew up in Poland in 1980s uh, with a single mom, you know, in one of these Soviet 
tower blocks. And, um, you know, at some point my mom remarried and um, my stepfather was an IT guy. So very early we had computers at home and I was always savvy when it, when it came to computers and the internet. So when I was hanging on that scaffold, I figured, you know, uh, internet must be just the best way for me to the American dream. And that's really how I started. You know, I started reading a lot of books. Um, I love reading books. I'm as much of a practitioner, an operator as I am a researcher um, and sort of somebody who loves to, um, you know, learn. Mm -hmm. So I would read books like, I remember the time, uh, Search Engine uh, Marketing Inc. by Bill Hunt. I remember I would go to Mars, all these different forums. And um, I think what I'm also good at is um, looking at emerging, emerging trends and technology. So at the time, Google was, you know, just, you know, it was already um, getting steam, but not everybody had a website and all of that. So I saw it as a huge opportunity. I uh, started building websites. And before I knew it, um, I moved from the scaffold to that office that I was dreaming about as, as, as you know, uh, as I arrived in the U.S. about 15 years ago. So, <laughs> you know, SEO journey was a little bit out of necessity at the time. Mm -hmm. And I actually started more in Google Ads. So I did a lot of Google Ads and search engine marketing. And SEO was something I was doing kind of like as a passion project. Mm -hmm. uh, but then pretty soon these passion projects became, you know, profitable ventures because you would do all of these different SEO optimizations and you would see, oh, I can make money here. I can do some affiliate marketing or whatnot, create um, a lead generation program. So it was just became something that I was started really getting very passionate about. So these were the, the my humble beginnings, you know, and and from there, uh, here I am, uh, guest on your show. So I hope that I did. Um, I've done a couple of things right, you know, along the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious, like even you said, so you're just were you going to just forums and Moz. I mean, were you like following anyone? How did you actually learn it? I know you were building websites because I know when building websites back then, you actually had to actually you actually have to learn a little bit. You just come on and like, you know, you have to like kind of learn by just doing. Is that what you're doing or how did you actually learn SEO? Yeah. So at a time, um, you know, I was working throughout the day and then uh, in the evening I would go to these um, sort of like a business, uh, like a adult business uh, program, if you will, just to learn business, um, English writing, you know, being being coming out of Poland, English was my second language. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was sort of like a, an evening uh, program where I met my first mentor who was really into Google ads and he was published author and all of that. So through his mentorship, I really learned a lot from him. He, he, his name is Paul and he really made a big impact in my career at, at the time. But, you know, from the type of people that I was following at the time, I mean, it was Rent Fishkin, Maz, I think he was my uh, biggest influence in the beginning of my journey. And uh, then I met Mike King. Uh, Mike King has been a friend of mine for a while. We've worked together with different companies and, um, and we, with separate companies, but on the same clients. And he's been a guest in my NYU program and I've known him forever. So uh, I learned a lot from him as well. I have to give him a lot of credit. And, um, and beyond that, man, just uh, doing your own thing. Um, I think it's like 80, 20. 80% um, of the time you should be doing things and 20% of the time researching. Some people have it a little bit backwards. So just trial and error. You know, I, I remember the first web development software I used was called uh, Yahoo Site Builder. I'm not sure oh. if any, if anything <laughs> like that. But So that's how I started, man. Then it was WordPress and then I would hire a developer. You know, you don't need to learn everything, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, you just have to understand what your skill set is, what your strengths are, sort with your strengths always. So for me, it was more about content and writing and writing books and just developing a lot of great content. So that was how I kind of started. And I always knew how to um, get publicity. I always knew how to, uh, you know, get on a stage or or get uh, featured on in a publication. So, you know, a, a kind of technical learning coding, I think I know enough to be dangerous, mm -hmm. but that's definitely not my forte. So I have people working with me who are experts of experts in that area. 
Love it. So find a mentor and 80 20. Great stuff there. Okay, you actually mentioned NYU, uh, Mike King, like who was actually a guest right like a week before. And he, yeah. you, you mentioned that he was a guest on your NYU program. Can you tell me more about the NYU program? Is this about SEO, digital marketing? I'm curious about this. Yeah, so um, at some point in New York, uh, I live in New York and I remember at the time I wanted to become a, a professional speaker basically. And uh, just, the first ever um, opportunity where I spoke, it was um, in front of this association of like business communicators. And I invited a few people on the panel. I was uh, completely, you know, anxious um, how I'm going to do, but I was just asking them questions. So it went well. And there was somebody there in the audience who was a professor at NYU and he brought his entire classroom. And apparently the whole event went amazing and I was I had really great question like you have great question on the show today I prepared for that and you know started talking to him so he was teaching within NYU program was masters of science in integrated marketing and I said man I, I, I how do I teach at this thing you know and he said well you know as an application there's this and that I'm like just give me your, your business card and I think I've emailed him his name his name is, uh, was Paul I emailed him like I think five, ten times. He never responded to me. So I started calling him up, leaving him voicemails. And at some point he picked up the phone. I'm like, it's me, it's Matthew. It's Matthew Kapala, I remember me. And he said, Matt, I'm just gonna connect you with the dean, submit your resume, do whatever you have to do. And that's how I got an introduction. I got a job and I was basically very part-time teaching a graduate class for a few semester on search marketing. And um, you know, uh, what I did was I developed a textbook, which was my also my first book, which I called okay. SEO Like I'm Five. And then I would invite these different SEO um, speakers and authors and practitioners. And Mike King actually would come in to every semester. He was uh, a great influence, and um, you know, and it was great. That's how that's how we he and I also know each other. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Be persistent, guys. Be persistent. If you want to get something, be persistent. Okay, so you actually mentioned your first book. I, I'm you wrote about what three books now? Is it three or four? Yeah, I would say um, I it, it's been a few, a few, a few of them were more like booklets. Okay. So I don't want to call them, you know, the, the books, but I would say two, two books. Got it. Uh, the first one, um, S. U. Lick on Five. It's actually mm -hmm. an interesting story because, um, you know, a lot of people in SEO they get intimidated and you know whether you want to hire an seo or you want to become an seo a lot of people get intimidated um with the technical jargon so my whole idea was to kind of simplify it a little bit and that book was very widely successful believe it or not i mean uh it just uh, and a lot of people read it and reached out to me and one of the pe one of the people who reached out to me as a result of the book was like somebody high up at l'oreal and I was doing a lot of SEO workshops at the time. And before actually I became an entrepreneur, I interviewed for a job at L'Oreal. I met with the CMO and I didn't get a job. They said, you know, we, we're not moving in a different direction. But then they called me up as a result of that book, SEO Like I'm Five. And uh, I got uh, one of my first clients when I started out as an entrepreneur. I built Alphamatic, my digital marketing agency. Um, and uh, it started out as a, as a consulting gig, and L'Oreal was one of my first clients. And it all happened as a result of that, you know, SEO Like I'm Five book oh, that man. really generated so many opportunities for me in my life that, that you know, I can't really count on, on, on both hands. Got it. Okay, so a book actually was your your lead gen almost, right? To actually land this client. That was actually one of my questions. Like, how do you land? Like, um, okay, let's take this back a little bit because I want to know. Uh, you you created Alphamatic and Alphamatic and L'Oreal was your first client. Like, how'd you come up with the name and like how, you know how, tell me the first like how the how it was born. Yeah, so you know I did a career on Madison Avenue uh, for a few years at some of these large agencies like WPP and part-time I was working at NYU. And um, at some point in my life, I wanted to um, move from New York and I was thinking about what I'm gonna move. And it was about five years ago. Eventually I moved to Miami, but in between, I wanted to take on this time 
um, it was it was after I actually I got divorced in New York, so I wanted to you know have some me time. And for a year, I lived as this you know laptop entrepreneur and digital nomad and whatnot. And that's when I that was the first year of Alphamatic, where it was just a consulting you know LC if you will. Mm-hmm. And I traveled Europe. I lived in like you know five, ten different countries and states in the U.S. Um, but then, um, you know, for me, Alphamatic was um, much bigger than that. You know, it was a it was a concept. It was an idea uh, to build an agency, and I settled in Miami, and that's that's how it started. And Alphamatic, actually, um, you ask about what it means. So Alphamatic is a means it's it's, it's a mathematic it's a mathematical puzzle where you replace oh. letters with numbers and you can create these word puzzles that, you know, if you like to geek out, mm-hmm. that's what it is. And it's pretty cool because, you know, I own a domain, alphamedic.com, yeah. yep. and that's a keyword that a lot of people search already. And then you have alpha in Greek alphabet, which means, you know, being the first. Mm-hmm. And that's what at Alphamedic we want to be the first uh, when it comes to trends and identifying, you know, uh, the, the latest tools and strategies and I think in the beginning I was searching for a domain alpha metric, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, <laughs> and it wasn't available. I'm like, alpha metric sounds cool. Um, you know, a few people have actually reached out to me to buy the domain. Um, hopefully, I'll make some money of it one day <laughs> for my retirement. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I was actually wondering about that because you know, domains like having like a nice one-word domain is is very valuable. I mean, when did you? How long ago did you register that? Was it like? Yeah. I don't even remember. It might have, <laughs> might have been like 2013, 14. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I want to um, take it back a little bit because I remember you were, ta- you were just talking about like how you use press to build your, your brand to like start um, you know, speaking on stage, getting in all these, these great publishers. I mean, what was, was, how, how was that about? Like how were you building your brand and how were, what was that one tip that you can give to someone to like get that PR that you were doing? Yeah, for sure. And I talk a lot about it in my um, upcoming book, The Psychology of a Website. Um, you know, what's most important at, at the outset is to uh, build trust. And, um, you know, you're not going to be able to sell or do anything with anybody if they don't trust you. And especially when it comes to SEO, um, there is a lot of shady companies and people don't really know what it is. So the trust factor is really what you have to develop first. Now, I love publishing. I love to write. Um, I have a team uh, that supports me when it comes to uh, content creation. So people have different uh, medium, um, right? So for you, maybe video. You are a good in front of a camera. I like to write. I like to research. And you know, when somebody watches a video, they have um, maybe f- a five-minute connection with you. Uh, when somebody reads a blog post, it's maybe 30 seconds. Now, if I put my book on your bookshelf, um, you know, you may be carrying your my book in your backpack. You may be looking at it, you know, hundred times as 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 you read it. So I get a connection with you like no other way, um, and that's my medium. Now, Amazon offers uh, self publishing. You can self publish a book. You can your process can be relatively easy. Um, you know, so I kind of think that everybody should have at least some kind of you know, I call it the booklet. You know, if it's mm-hmm. if it's fifty pages to a hundred pages, it's a booklet. Uh, a book, it should be about two hundred pages uh, in that range. Uh, you really have to put enough effort and research, and so call it the book. Uh, so you're not publishing an ebook. <laughs> Got it. Um, but yeah, you want to do that, and uh, you know, you can self-publish a book, and just having that that message, you know, is going to fo- this process will force you to be able to create your elevator pitch. Um, you know, how to actually explain your message. Like, what is your message? Uh, you know, it can be 10 ways to do something or six steps. You know, my formula is six steps. I call it the website PSY formula. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can talk about it a little bit later. But that's going to really get this, you know, I call it the spider method. That's the body of the spider. Uh, and again, for somebody else, it could be maybe a video or whatnot. Um, then I create the legs of the spider. So these are the articles, the blog posts. I would uh-huh. grab chapters from my book and I would reach out to, you know, I remember at, at the time when I did SEO Like I'm Five, I wasn't maybe as established as, as I am right now where I already have, you know, these 
you mentioned in the beginning in the introduction whether it's you know forbes or entrepreneur yeah. but i would reach out to other blogs step by step and i would say no it's not i i'm gonna offer you an, an exclusive on uh, publishing one of my chapters or i'm gonna write something new to, for you and all of these legs of the spider would kind of lead to the body of the spider which is the book and inside the book you put these conversion triggers what i call mm-hmm. right so as you read through the book um, I'm going to make sure that you know who I am, you know my journey, and I'll include some hooks throughout the book, whether it's to download the worksheet where I can have your email uh, or um, progress to like an online course or go to my agency, maybe we can work together. So then you build the kind of an entire funnel around that. And one of the best tactics, uh, just this is the last thought on this subject, mm-hmm. is to think about the industry uh, targeting. So I love to do these industry guides. Uh, I call it the red carpet industry guide strategy. So basically, you know, you may have a company and you work with, I don't know, dental offices. So, you know, have that like killer guide about SEO for dental offices. You know, my guides are about 10,000 words, eight to 10,000 words. They take about you know, it, it cost me thousands of dollars to, literally to create these guides. So it's not like I hire some kind of a writer from somewhere. You know, I, I write myself or I hire the best writer I can get. I have a graphic designer. I do t- table of content. And and check out my boy, um, uh, Beck Linko, uh, Brian Dean. So he's another guy who's been an influence in my career, you know, and I've been talking to Brian in the past, but he really knows that strategy. So yeah. these long-form guides that's really what's working for uh, the beginners if you don't have much budget. Love it, love it. Dropping all those knowledge bombs. I couldn't, I didn't want to interrupt you there. But I mean, okay, Scared guys. It. I mean, so if you guys want some long shelf life of your brand, create a book. I'm curious, okay, and, and you'll get you know noticed by all these other publications, but, but you said create a book. So how long does it take to create a book? I mean, you've written a bunch of them. I mean, not this particular one, let's get into this uh, particular one, um, the, the, your latest book. How long did it take you to write this one? Yeah, so my la- my latest book, The Psychology of a Website, Mastering Cognitive Biases, Conversion Triggers, and Modern SEO uh, to Achieve Massive Results. Um, the inspiration came really about, um, I would say, a year ago, two, maybe two years ago. Um, I basically realized that the human brain is your algorithm. And... As an industry, you know, we a lot of times we're playing catch up. Oh my eyes, something happened. This is the new new uh, snippet on Google. Let's just you know follow that. Um, but you have to kind of think about where Google is going. So instead of chasing the algorithm, my strategy is to get a- ahead of the algorithm. And what Google is trying to do, it's trying to reverse human psychology. So you may want to write this down. Modern SEO is about understanding and predicting human psychology. So that's really what I realized. Um, and dropping bomb right there. Yep, yep. That was- that's what I realized. <laughs> <laughs> dropping them, dropping them. Uh, All right, you know, okay. That's what I realized. Yeah. No, no. So, I mean, so you realize that, okay, you're t- you actually in your book, you, you, you talk about choice triggers. What, what are like choice triggers that you talk about in your book? Yeah. So just just uh, on the on the concept, um, you really as you as you develop your own book, just for people listening, you have to have that the big idea like that's, you know, if you're just writing 10 SEO tips, you know, uh, it's there's not really a big idea behind it. So you have to have this big idea. Now, um, I I basically um, developed this website, PSY formula, it's a six, six step formula. And I talk about two things, cognitive biases, uh, which you mentioned in choice psychology, these are basically mental shortcuts. You know, when you're driving a car and you see a, a cop car nearby, you're gonna automatically check your speed limit. I mean, your, your, how, how fast oh, yeah. you're driving. And I, I, you know, automatically your foot will go to that brake pedal, right? Because it is an automatic reaction. It's, it's a cognitive bias. You know, there are many different examples I give in the book, but people need to realize that when somebody visits your website, they, you know, Sigmund Freud said, um, the mind, the human mind is like an iceberg. One seventh is above water 
and the rest is below water, okay? So that one seventh of the brain, the way I talk about trust uh, just a few minutes ago, that's really that mathematical computation, the expectation of a future behavior, the expectation of a reward, that's the, the scientific part. But the rest, uh, the, the underwater of, an, of an iceberg, these are human emotions. This is what Google is trying to reverse engineer. Like Google doesn't care like who did the best job putting the keyword in the content like here and there. What they care about is do people trust it? Uh, what's quality? So, you know, and then the conversion triggers where I talk about in the book, this are basically stimuli that you can play strategically through your website conversion funnel. Um, and I talk about six of them. Yeah. Number one is you have to build trust. Number two, you have to remove objections. You have to anticipate objections and you have to proactively remove them with your website content. Number three is uh, getting small commitments. So, you know, if you ever went to a Tony Robbins uh, event, uh, they're going to constantly, or any motivational speaker, they're going to constantly ask you, well, make this affirmation, you know, raise your hand, say yes, say yes, right? Yeah, yeah. So they want you to commit because once the human mind commits to something, you stay on course to get it done, right? That's what um, Leonardo da Vinci said. It's easier to resist at the beginning than at the end. So, and, you know, when you when somebody bounces back, then Google will hurt you. You know that. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at SCM rush ranking correlations, or you can looking at these studies, and they're showing you know keyword in title, keyword in this that at the bottom of the pile of correlations. Like these are still important, you know, metadata and and schema are still important. But what they're looking at at the most uh, correlations are the user signals. So basically, like you know, human psychology of right liking, trusting, uh, converting. Uh, exploring, scrolling, going from page to page. So you have to use human psychology because, um, you know, in the real world, we can have eye contact. I can shake your hand. Online is a little bit different. Like you have, you know, I always say that the human attention span on the internet is shorter than that of a goldfish. You know, somebody arrives of your homepage, boom, they're gone. So you really have to think about um, how the human brain processes these microseconds and go down into the science and the psychology. So I've read all these different books. Uh, I've read textbooks on psychology, evolution mm -hmm. psychology. You know, I studied the whole thing. I look at websites from some of the biggest brands in the world, whether it's, you know, Dropbox, MailChimp, you know, Basecamp, mm -hmm. uh, Apple, B2B and whatnot, the e-commerce websites and Amazon. You know, how do they leverage these cognitive biases and conversion triggers to develop a playbook that somebody who's uh, pretty much just starting out or is an advanced uh, marketer can can learn something from. So that was my process and my objective, Paul. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, you actually also like interviewed some 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 influencers like Ja Rule and was Dory Clark. I mean, are yeah. they also part of? You actually included them in your book as well. Is that, and what was their portion? Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, I interviewed Jarul, um, who came out with his new uh, social media app and a platform called Icon. Mm -hmm. And Icon is basically for content creators to uh, produce this. You, you should check it out, Paul, uh, you know, to put this live um, uh, content where users can tip and they can also monetize. It's very cool. And, you know, I like to use new platforms. Uh, so uh, I engage with him on the platform and I interviewed Jarul. Mm -hmm. I was actually talking to him about viral content. Yeah. You know, I I like the marketers going at conf on conferences talking about viral viral content, but you know, they, they, they haven't really done viral things. Somebody I wanted to ask my strategy is always to ask go to the top. Yep. You know, Jaru has millions of followers and he's been consistently able to get viral things out, you know, whether it's music or his entrepreneurial uh, pursuits. So he gave me this formula how to go viral and he was talking about, you know, you always have to, in his words, think about creating a spectacle. Okay. So, you know, I call it infotainment, um, you know, SEO like on five or psychology of a website, I'll tell stories, you know, I like to entertain. Uh, I have graphics. I, I have engaging, like you said, interviews, you know, mm -hmm. Dory Clark on the other hand, um, is a four-time uh, Harvard Business Review author. 
Uh, she's a best-selling author. She's um, number one uh, communication thinker in the world. So on the other hand, you know, with her, I talk about some of the more, you know, academic uh, considerations of my work. But yeah, you know, I would say this is another thing that you do that I recommend to everyone is, um, you know, you can become an expert and authority by association. Uh -huh. So, um, and, you know, think about it. If you have a beauty startup, the first thing that I would do is uh, get some kind of an MD doctor uh, who is, you know, reputable doctor coming on my show with, you know, white doctor's robe. That's like credibility right there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, MD endorsing my product. Or you do an interview with Ren Fishkin or somebody else. Um, you know, that's kind of like the joint credibility. So that is important, like you mentioned, to be social. Yep. Um, and you know, I try to be social, and and that's how that's how I I, I landed these uh, these interviews. Love it. <laughs> yeah, credibility through association. I love that. I didn't think about that. So that's that's some good stuff there. I love that. Okay. So I want to like let let's with with your book coming out. Um, I'm curious. Like, so what is that one thing you hope that someone will get out of the book? Yeah. You know. So. <laughs> This is an interesting story, and, and, and I wrote it about uh, in the book, but um, on March 7th, 2020, okay? So this is the last weekend before the whole, like, shutdown. I got married, okay? And we went uh, on a honeymoon to India. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all these lockdowns, this is the beginning of the pandemic, and we are traveling, you know, in India from you know, Delhi to Rishikesh and we doing, we went to see, um, to Kambatore in the south of India to go to like, you know, Sadhguru's temples and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. we are kind of, oh my God, that COVID is happening. Let's go back. Uh, but there's, and, and I love, I used to work with a lot of people in India and I really wanted to go there. It was one of the most, you know, self discovering um, experiences in my life, mm -hmm. but you know, when I went to India and even here in America, I'm still seeing that a lot of people, you know, are missing out on the opportunities that the internet uh, provides. Starting a website, you know, on Shopify, come on, drop shipping, whatever you do, that's free. And, you know, Facebook and Instagram, like you post something and you get a few likes, they don't really want to give you free. Uh, you have to pay unless you are, I don't know, a, 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 a Jaru. Um, but with Google, the level playing, the playing field is not maybe level, but it's a little bit more accessible. It's actually very accessible. So, you know, in India, there is the caste system and there's a lot of people living on the streets. And that was very, you know, uh, a profound experience for me when I saw that in Bombay. And I was thinking about, you know, how can I make an impact that is a little bit bigger than myself and my clients? And how can I get all of this thinking and put it in, you know, the form of a book? And um, if you go to website psy.com, uh, the book is not available yet. It's going to be available April 5th. Mm -hmm. But if you get on the list, you can get Kindle uh, in this promotion, early bird promotion for a few days. It's going to be available for 99 cents. Then it's going to be you know, $10 or whatever. But you know, I really want to give somebody 99 cents. It can change your life uh, or not. Uh, you know, but if you follow my advice and these are time-tested, uh, I tested it. I tested it on myself, on my business, on my clients, and I also looked what you know, Apple.com and Amazon.com and some of these biggest brands are doing to put all of it into a 200-page uh, product and you know, associated video courses and whatnot that that people can really benefit from. So, as much as it is, you know, I'm hoping that it's going to land me on bigger stages. Um, in few days, I'm, I'm speaking at uh, Marketing Profs. Then I'm uh, the featured speakers at SMX Create uh, in April. Then I'm speaking at Digital Summit. So it's opening up opportunities for me for sure. But it really, I hope to make an impact on people who are entrepreneurs just getting started. They want to you know, build an agency, learn SEO, or just build a profitable website that I'm offering something new and something innovative that nobody really has ever said before this way. Um, there is a book called Influence by uh, Dr. Robert Cialdini, yep. which was written like in the, I don't know, 80s, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. and doesn't talk online at all. So it talks about magazine ads and newspaper ads, but 
it's one of the most important books that everybody should read in the field of marketing. So to me, it's more like humble contribution, I hope, to uh, continue the work of Robert Cialdini in the field of uh, choice psychology. Excellent. <laughs> love it love it i actually have his book behind me back there i i mean I, I go i refer back to it all the time so i mean okay so let's go let's go take a look at the comments be here if anyone has any questions please ask them uh in the comment in the live chats we i see one that came in here by hobby um it says here the future question question to quest future seo is original images and on the page two many images let me see here. I'm not rebuilding. <laughs> yeah, drop questions, guys. Drop questions right now. I want to hear your questions. So drop your questions, guys. Drop your questions in here. So like, what's up, Shar? Welcome to the live stream. Uh, let's see here. Dialed in config. Also left um, biggest takeaway from the video I got uh, coming in right in the beginning. Your video SEO is the video of the page it is on okay we have i love seo okay guys be sure to i'm gonna have i have my last question coming up so i want you guys to ask your questions uh before i ask my last question actually i'll ask my last question that i usually ask my my every seo professional on the show while people think about some questions if someone was to get into the seo um industry or profession what would be your tip to for them to get into it and break into it yeah so i can only speak from experience uh, I was trying to get into the industry and, you know, you can obviously get in th through your own venture and doing your own entrepreneur, you know, project, or you can try to get a job and move on in the career world. Uh, for me, it was getting, you know, just putting my work out, uh, proving with my own work that I can do it. Um, you know, it was just very hard for me hanging on that scaffold doing construction to go to a job interview and say, you know, I want to do marketing. And eventually I went back to, to school. Um, but, you know, in that moment, I felt like I needed to build my own portfolio. Now, um, you know, we have um, uh, 10 people working at, at my company right now. We, you know, we're still only a few year old. Uh, but we, you know, where I hire people, I, I definitely look for that. Um, you know, either they've done it for a client and they have case studies or they've done it for themselves and not, I know what they can bring to the table. So definitely be a practitioner. Uh, and the second thing that I look for is I ask them, you know, wh wh like you ask me, where do you get your inspirations? Who are you listening to? Who are you following? And if they don't really have the right answer, then I know that this person is just not driven enough uh, to work for me. Uh, so, you know, you just have to be, um, you know, I think Maxwell, um, what's the Max from Goldwell said, 10,000 hours, you know, yep. are you willing to go to the library and spend, you know, thousands of hours reading about SEO or digital marketing. You know, the world is a competitive place. There are six mm -hmm. billion people. Why should I give you an opportunity or somebody else? So you have to 10 exit, you know, read 10 more books, create 10 more blog posts, uh, make your website 10 times better. And, you know, and then the opportunities will come. Then just sit back and relax. <laughs> they find you, man, or woman. <laughs> love it, love it. I mean, I think we share the same library of books. I mean, I have a bunch of those books that you've been mentioning. Um, I mean, you've been quoting a lot of them. Also, okay, I didn't say anything coming here, but I want you to let people know when, yeah, repeat again, when, when, where they can get your book, where can they find it, and where can, you know, when can they buy it, and all that good stuff, and how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, you don't want to miss it. Uh, it's going to be on April 5th because um, during a very short period of time, the Kindle version will be available for 99 cents. So um, just go to my website, alphamedic.com, and um, there is the book link or go to website psy.com and just sign up on the list and any list on my website, actually, and I'll notify you when it's available. So, and you know, I, these days I, I'm on, uh, spending a lot of time, I would say on Instagram. Um, so find me at search decoder or just, uh, Google, uh, Instagram, my name, uh, as I mentioned, I'm also on icon, which is Jarul's new, uh, social media platform. Um, a little bit clubhouse, uh, Facebook, not too much. I check Twitter from time to time. So, uh, shoot me an email if you want to, uh, but I'd love to hear from anybody interested in uh, getting in touch and talking about SEO or whatnot. Um, I want to, you know, also thank you so much, Paul, uh, just being on your show and sharing my insights with your community. Thank you for having me.
No, thank you. Thank you very much for being my part of my show as well. I mean, we had here dialed in config already looking for the book. Is there a pre-release? Yes. You go to, is it website PSY.com? Is that where they can at least reserve a copy or like put their name in an email list? Is that what yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Like website PSY, like the sense for uh, psych the first three letters of psychology. So it, it, the formula PSY says for persuasion, science and yield. Um, and that's, that's, that's why the, the URL is like that. Got it. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Matthew, can you please hold on while I sign off real quick? All right. For sure, man. All right, guys, that concludes another episode of the SEO video show. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notified when we go live next week. I hope to see you there. All right. I'll see you. Peace out. for watching hope you come back next week make sure to subscribe you don't want to miss a thing hope you learn something new because the vibe is incredible from the special seo professionals seo video show let's work want to see you be an seo expert paul andre devera helping you step it up no delay right now time to level up hey thank you so much for watching make sure to subscribe Woo.